This ancient well marks the beginning of the Ain Zubaida. It is 32 meters deep. Water from this well used to flow all the way to Mecca. About 50 years ago, modern pipes were used for pumping water from here. Water level has since dropped and the well is now dry. In the old days, water used to collect in the mother well, the Ummiya. From the bottom of the well, an underground tunnel carries this water to Mecca. The stone circles are tops of wells along this tunnel. These wells are known as Kharazat. These were used for digging the tunnel and to keep the water running. In the floodplains, the design of the Kharazat changes. They look like ships of stone, standing in the waves of sand, pointing in the direction of floods, which occasionally swept through these wadis. The underground tunnel, the Qanat, is just big enough for a man to walk. It is 40 to 50 centimeters wide, and the height varies along the length. The line of Kharazat continues on the south side of the road, and runs through the broad expanse of Wadi Nu'man. Flood waters in the Wadi seep into the ground and recharge the water table. This used to maximize the water collection for Ain Zubayda. Flood waters also brought gravel and sand, occasionally overflowing into the Kharazat. As a result, the Qanat and the Kharazat had to be cleaned, and this was done quite regularly. Some Kharazat are quite close together, but some are as far apart as 80 meters. Most of the Kharazat have steps to walk to the top, and footholds inside the shafts to go down to the Qanat. All these years, the Kharazat and the Qanat were kept in good repair. But now, land development is reaching out in all directions. Kharazat appears stranded in the middle of roads, and it looks as though they will not last much longer. The Qanat continues to meander through the Wadi running horizontally many meters below ground. From Wadi Nu'man to Arafat, the level of land drops by over 20 meters. So, as we enter Arafat, the level of the land has dropped sufficiently for the Qanat, the water channel, to appear above the ground. In the old days, there were a number of water tanks in Arafat. These were connected to Ain Zubaydah and filled before the Hajj season in time for the arrival of the pilgrims. But Ain Zubaydah is now dry, and some of these tanks are no longer in use. At Jabal al-Rahmah, the water channel, the Qanat, is above ground. It wraps around the south and the west side of the hill. To this day, much of it is still intact and has been preserved. In the past, water overflowed from the Qanat into the tanks. The sides of the tanks had stone slabs with stone plugs, which worked like tabs. Once, there were many more like these sabils. Now, only a few of them remain. A reminder of the sweet water from Wadi Nu'man that once flowed in these ancient stones. After Jabal al-Rahmah, Ain Zubayda used to cross the plain of Arafat and Wadi Urna, the famous wadi which the pilgrims cross on the 9th of Dhul Hijjah. But in this area, all remains seems to have disappeared, and the first Kharaza appears on the other side of the wadi. The Kharazat in this area are not big. As the ground slopes down, almost as a surprise, the water channel, the Qanat, again reappears above the ground. The height of the Qanat is only one or two meters above ground. 
Behind the houses, Ain Zubaydah runs parallel to the hills. Staying close to the hills, the Qanat turns towards the road. It is barely visible above the ground, next to the new concrete storm drain. It crosses over roads number 8, 7, 6, and then heads towards road number 5. Approaching road number 5, Ain Zubaydah runs at a higher level along the hill. It appears like a smaller version of the Great Wall of China. Ruins of the old walls, along with the new repairs, are clearly visible. This is the most impressive section of the wall. Here, the Great Wall recesses into a wadi. The wall of Ain Zubaydah hugs the sides of the hills. It keeps a horizontal level with a very slight slope of approximately 1 in 1500. As we get close to Muzdalifa, the land continues to rise and the heights of the walls continues to get smaller and smaller. Close to the start of Muzdalifa, the water channel disappears below ground and two kharazat appears between the trees. Around the corner, in the middle of a large car park, another kharazat appears lonely and isolated. From Muzdalifa, the Qanat heads in the direction of the district of Aziziya. At the base of the hill, the water channel reappears above the ground. Along this length, the condition of the wall is quite poor. The wall curves away from the road towards the hill between Aziziya and Mina. In this area, Ain Zubaydah runs behind a security wall, and there is a good chance that it will be preserved. Onwards from King Abdullah Bridge, we stay on the main road, as the length of the water channel in this area has disappeared with new constructions in Aziziya. After King Khalid Bridge, we come to the last length of Ain Zubaydah. Hidden under a collection of TV dishes, there is a glimpse of the Qanat. It is used as a foundation for fixing TV dishes, and it is broken in many places. It was the main water supply for Mecca. However, as modern technology advanced, Ain Zubaydah slowly fell into disuse. The last major repair was by King Abdul Aziz some 80 years ago. Since then, parts of the wall have broken off and sections of the water channel have become exposed. The Qanat runs along the road, getting lower and closer to the ground, and suddenly it disappears into a hill. This is the last glimpse of Ain Zubaydah. This is the end of the Qanat today. But until recently, it used to go another few kilometers to a large tank known as the Mahbas. Water from Wadi Nu'man, a distance of roughly 26 kilometers, used to empty into this tank. The tank is now long gone, and in its place now stands a mosque in pale green, the Masjid Bin Baz. This spot, marks the completion of the great Qanat built by the great queen Zubayda. This Qanat provided permanent flowing water to Mecca for more than 1,200 years and kept alive the memory of the golden age of the Arab civilization.